Coming up on today's edition of Vikings Now by Chat Sports, we have an instant reaction to the Vikings Titans preseason game. We're going to be going over some winners and losers from the game. The game literally just ended 30 minutes ago, and I'm giving you guys my initial reactions to the game as the Vikings did end up losing to the Titans 24 to 16. We know Kevin O'Connell's MO. He doesn't like to play a lot of the starters during preseason. And he kind of followed that again tonight. As the Titans did end up beating the Vikings, a final score of 24-16, led by Malik Willis. He was the star of the game for the Titans. He played majority of the night. Um, he looked solid as a pure passer. Like, I think his wheels really killed the Vikings throughout the night. Uh, Tajay Spears, he had a sweet move on Lewis Seen, who we'll talk about here in a little bit. He hurdled over him, but overall, I thought Seen had a pretty solid night. Viking side of things, uh, I thought Nick Mullins looked really well. He was 13 to 23 for 151 yards, uh, no tuds, no interceptions. But Ty Chandler, like I know the stat sheet, it says 11 carries, 24 yards, but he played a lot better than that. Like he absolutely balled out today. Like I'm a big fan of Ty Chandler's game, and like he's the definition of a guy that passes the eye test. Like I know like maybe a casual fan will look at that and be like, dude, you're fi you're a fan of Ty Chandler, and he ran for. 24 yards on 11 carries, I'll say, hell yeah, I am. Like, I love Ty Chandler. I love what he brings to the table. And he, I thought he played well tonight. You know, obviously he only ran for 24 yards, but he also had a terrible offensive line game from the Vikings. Uh, and I thought he looked good. I thought Ty Chandler ran the ball really, really well. And then Nick Mullins, he actually had a lot of his passes heading over to Nick Muse. He had three receptions, 446 yards on the night. So shout out to Nick Muse as well. Coming up, I'm going to give you guys my winners and losers from tonight's game, but I want you guys to grade the Minnesota Vikings back to school style. Give me an A, B, C, D, or F. Grade the Vikings' performance tonight versus the Tennessee Titans. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So if you guys get hit with a YouTube ad break, sit back, let it play, and let me know your thoughts on the Vikings' performance tonight. Give me an A, B, C, D, or F. So number one for me, and I got this guy as a winner and that's Nick Mullins. Uh, Nick Mullins, back-to-back -back games, I thought he's looked really solid. You know, obviously you don't want Nick Mullins to be the, your, your starter for all 17 games by any reason. But if he was going to be the guy that, like, had to step in for Kirk Cousins for one game, maybe if Kirk gets, you know, abducted by aliens, whatever it may be, like, I got confidence in Nick Mullins stepping in there and getting the job done. Tonight he was, again, solid. Like, first-half stats from Nick Mullins, he was 13-23, and 151 yards. You know, last week against Seattle, he had over 140 yards as well. Like, Nick Mullins, one of those guys. Like, you're not going to want him to play the entire game but or the entire season. But if he has to step in there for just one singular game, one singular opponent, like, I wouldn't think it's the biggest shocker in the world if he was able to get the job done. So I thought Nick Mullins, he impressed me, impressed me yet again tonight for the Vikings. And honestly, like, I don't. I would have never want Kirk Cousins to miss a game this year, but like if you would have to, like one game, let's ride with Nick Mullins, especially against the, it's like the Lions, Bears, or Packers, like at home. Like give me Nick Mullins season. I feel like he could have a very solid night. Uh, number one loser for me. I, I mean, I gave the kid a chance. Uh, it's Andrew Booth Jr. Uh, listen, the thing is with Booth, it's like. You know, you expect so much from him heading into year two, second round pick out of Clemson. Like, you want him to be the guy that, like, kind of takes that step up in the Vikings cornerback room and truly be that CB2 for them. But he just really hasn't lived up to the height. And it's all good. Like, I get it. Like, Andrew Booth, like, he's not the biggest – or he's not the best scheme fit. Like, he ran, like, zone coverage in high school. He ran zone coverage when he got to Clemson. Then, obviously, he gets to, uh, you know, Minnesota. A lot of it is man-to-man -man with Brian Flores. Uh, and he's just not the best scheme fit. He's just not really used to, uh, you know, what Brian Flores likes to do and everything. So, you know, listen, Booth, I'm not going to overreact and say he should be cut by any means, but he's definitely on the hot seat, especially with guys like Tay Gowan making a play on special teams. Najee Thompson made a play on special teams today. Jawan Williams had another sweet pass breakup. And obviously a Caleb Evans, Brian Flores is a big uh, fan of him as well. Uh, just keep your eyes on Lewis or Andrew Booth if he's a guy that you know could potentially get cut. Hope he's not, but just something to uh, you know consider. My second winner today is a uh, former first round or last year's first round pick, Lewis freaking scene. 
Uh, he got hurt a little. He got embarrassed on the Tajay Spears touchdown run, which is fine. It's going to happen. But uh, I thought overall he played well. He did have a sack on Malik Willis. And the thing I love about seeing is just his overall versatility. Um, I think seeing, like, he's shown it this preseason. Like, he's shown the ability to come downhill and make a sweet tackle. Like, he's shown ability to play multiple positions on defense. And, like, in the safety room, like, that's what the Vikings are going to need. Like, they're going to need a guy to be versatile like that. And, you know, especially with Brian Flores, like, that's the number one thing he likes, versatility. Like, at the linebacker spot, especially at the safety spot, like, that's what he likes the most. And I think Lewis seen, like, maybe we haven't seen the most out of him during the preseason so far, but I thought he looked very, very solid tonight. So it's going to be interesting to see, like, who ends up getting that starting safety spot safety spot next to Harrison Smith. Uh, we've seen the Vikings run a lot of three safeties at practice and everything with Metellus and Bynum. But I think seeing a guy that tonight, he just impressed me uh, a little more than everybody else. But I got to ask you guys, who is your biggest winner from tonight's game against the Tennessee Titans? I would probably go Nick Mullins, honestly. Um, I thought he looked good again, but you guys can let me know down in the comment section. Who is your biggest winner for the Vikings against the Tennessee Titans? Another big-time loser for me was offensive line. And I think we do have a problem in the NFL right now where backup offensive line units are just so freaking bad compared to backup defensive line units. Like, I feel like the backup defensive line, no matter what game you have been watching, they have been significantly better than the backup offensive line unit. And the Vikings' backup offensive line... They struggled tonight. I mean, again, like Austin Schlopman, I swear to God, he gets beat more than anybody in that freaking National Football League. Uh, even a guy like Ole Udo. Like, Ole Udo, he's been a swing tackle for the Vikes the past couple of years. Like, he struggled yet again tonight. And, like, he struggled last week against the Seahawks. And it's just like, it's getting to the point with Udo where it's just like, will we be able to play him? So, I'm not the biggest fan of the Vikings backup offensive line, but again, it's a problem around the entire NFL. So again, it's going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, how they kind of play that. But Udo as a swing tackle, I'm fine with. But overall, if you'd ever have to step in for Brian O'Neill again, uh, I would not be the biggest fan of that. And my last winner tonight, uh, you know, you guys can call me out for pushing an agenda on this one. Um, Todd Chandler. Uh, listen, he ran for 11 carries, 24 yards tonight. It's not going to blow you away by any freaking means, but... I absolutely love Ty Chandler. I love what he brings to the table, and I really do think he's going to be RB2 at least for the Vikings this year. Like, I do think Madison, he's going to get the RB1 reps early in October and, or early in September and early in October, but don't be shocked at all if November, December, and January roll, out, roll around and Ty Chandler is getting the most amount of carries out of the Vikings' backfield. Like, I really do believe this. Like, I'm a believer in my eyes, and my eyes tell me Ty Chandler is him. My eyes tell me Ty Chandler is in a very explosive running back. And every single time he touches the ball, I feel like he could be breaking one off. And that's a great feeling to have. And listen, he had 11 carries for 24 yards tonight. Yards per carry, not too good. But, you know, I just feel like that was more due to the offensive line not playing too well instead of Ty Chandler absolutely uh, balling out. So I think Ty Chandler, if he got some reps with the first team O-line, I think he would absolutely play his ass off. But I give you guys two losers, and I gave you guys three winners. I want you guys to let me know, who is your biggest loser tonight? Again, I got to probably go with the Vikings backup offensive line unit. Uh, you know, Nick Mullins, Jaron Hall didn't really have a lot of time. Vikings weren't able to establish anything on the ground. So I'd probably have to go with them as the biggest loser from tonight's game. Thank you guys so much for watching today's uh, show and watching today's winners and losers edition of Vikings Now. Hope you guys enjoyed your weekend. Hope you guys enjoyed watching the late night Vikes here and as always, we will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Skull Bikes.